This week on Wildcat News, we attend this year's prom. And we meet Johnson County Superintendent of Education. All these stories and more are coming up because Wildcat News starts now. Good morning, West Johnston, and welcome to the final episode of Wildcat News. I'm Miranda Bean. And I'm Allison Wade. Last week, the class of 2021 attended this year's all-senior prom. Katherine Green reports. On Thursday, April 29th, students and staff gathered at the Barnett Broads Lab to dance, eat, and celebrate each other at prom. Media coordinator Yvette Davis has been the prom chair for many years and shares her favorite thing about prom. Seeing our kids dance, I love that our kids are dancers, and that's one of the traditions I hope that we don't lose with COVID is West Johnston students attend prom and they stay all night and they dance as if they were trying to wear the the carpet or the, the finish off of those floors. It is amazing and I love dancing with them and seeing them dance. I love seeing them in their their beautiful gowns and their tuxes and they love to be seen. It's just so celebratory all night that, that it just flies by and sometimes I wish I could do it all over again when it's over. Senior Hayden Hunter graduated early in December and explains how he is still able to attend prom as a student. So that was the big, big determining factor for me why I didn't take classes this semester at all. I had a whole conversation with Miss Freeman and she said I can still attend prom, I can still do everything that you would have like a senior would do, but without taking classes. Mostly due to the circumstances that everything's happening right now. It wouldn't be too difficult for that to happen. Due to COVID, the capacity of students allowed at prom decreased significantly. Davis shares how decisions were made to keep attendees safe. This year's prom is a senior prom and that's part of a county mandate for this year because we had to have a cap on the number of students who could attend and the only realistic way to do that was to make it for seniors only. However, seniors are allowed to bring guests who are either underclassmen or from other schools or have already graduated because we want everyone to be able to bring the guest who means something to them, not just, you know, to come alone because they, you know, they're leaving a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend at home um, because he or she is an underclassman. Hunter describes his promposal he planned for his girlfriend. Promposals are a big part of like not only a couples thing but definitely a prom thing. So if you have a relationship of course you guys are going to prom together but you still want to make it special you know you're only gonna get one prom. So I promposed to Madison at 3 50 in the morning. We were going to take a day beach trip to Emerald Isle. So I get to her house at 3 50 in the morning. I had a date card like bachelor themed date card where it was, will you accept this rose? And I came around the corner with a gigantic paper rose and I asked her if she would accept the rose and go with me to prom. Davis feels the hard work put into prom was worth it. It's like wedding planning in a way. You, everything is, is crystallizing into this amazing moment where you get to just see all of your vision and your dream sort of come to life in one giant space. And when I go with my faculty set up team to the venue. It is so much fun to carry out the dream that the girls put together in committee and to say set those centerpieces on the table or to you know light the candles and do all those little details. And I guess I love details and uh, and prom is a place for me to really express myself through those details. Let's dance the night away. I'm Katherine Green, Wildcat News. Thanks Katherine. The school system's Board of Education holds an important role in making decisions that impact students' education. Allison Wade learns more about Johnston County Superintendent of Education. Dr. Eric Bracey has been superintendent in public schools in North Carolina for over 13 years. In 2020, he joined Johnston County Public Schools as the new superintendent. Bracey comes from a family of teachers and shares why that led him to become an educator. I became a school leader for one reason. I wanted to be like my dad. and. It's funny, when you think about that perspective, my mom would get him in kindergarten in Weldon City Schools, and my dad was the high school principal, so he'd have him right there at the end, and I thought that was a, an interesting dynamic, but he knew everybody in our town, in our county, in our community, and I, and I wanted to be that person that had that impact on that amount of people in a community. I'm a superintendent today because of him, because he encouraged my brother and me from a young age and young in our career as administrators to do this. So we always say our 
careers are a testament to our, our mom and dad. Tracy explains his role as superintendent. You know how the president is commander in chief, I am cheerleader in chief. I you know, like to go around and support people and applaud them and, and really provide a sense of direction and goals and purpose for why we do what we do. And that is my job, to work with the board. I have the unique opportunity. I hire the entire leadership team. I have the final um, approval on all administrators in the district. Well, approval of all personnel, but you, obviously I can't hire every teacher that comes into the school system, but I, I place a great laser-like focus on the administrators that come into the district as well. Over the course of the school year, Bracey has worked to learn more about Johnson County Public Schools. Bracey shares his goals and what he hopes to achieve moving forward. Johnson County Public Schools right now is having some struggles academically. We've had some financial challenges here prior to my arrival, but I, I'm very confident that we're going to improve things academically as well. It's just great people here, and I'm, I'm not a very patient man, so I want everything to improve like yesterday. So as we go through this process and prepare ourselves to take the next step academically, it's exciting. It's going to be exciting to watch. And hopefully, when I'm sitting here five years from now, I can say, you know, when I came to Johnson County Public Schools, they were ranked 83rd in the state. And now we are 10 or 12 or 8. I'm Allison Wade, Wildcat News. With this being the last episode of Wildcat News for the year, I can proudly say that I've been a part of over 80 episodes of Wildcat News since my freshman year. I've been a part of Wildcat News for over seven seasons, which is the most anyone in this program has ever worked on. Now as a senior and as I get ready to graduate, I'm able to look back and see all of the things that this publication has taught me and how it's helped me grow throughout my time at West. Student media has been the place that I've been able to call my home in high school, much like others are at home in sports or the fine arts. While this journey has not been easy or the expected, especially over the last year, I genuinely hope the best for this program in the future and hope to see it continue to grow and move forward with the students that join. Student media has given me the opportunity to share other stories and continuously meet new people on a daily basis. This year, Wildcat News has created over 26 episodes. That's 26 episodes done at home, 26 episodes done with Zoom meetings and back and forth communication. That's 26 episodes that this team has put blood, sweat, and tears into, quite literally. 26 episodes that might not mean much to others, but mean so much to us. I don't know what the future holds for Wildcat News or even West. I really wish I did, but I know that it will all work out in the end. Students are one of the biggest things that make this school what it is, and future students will continue to change our school and make it their own. I hope other students continue to explore and learn and find what they are curious about in life. My warm and most heartfelt regards to this school and everyone who has been a part of it. Well, that's all for us this year. If you have any comments, questions, or story leads, email us at wjstudentmedia at gmail.com or send us a tweet at wjstudentmedia. And if you want to watch Wildcat News at home, on the go, or catch up on past episodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Miranda Bean. And I'm Allison Wade. For one last time, thanks for watching and have a great week.